Chemical reactions of acid part two. So our uh, last video we have talked about the reactions between the metal and acid. You can refer to this QR code. You got a YouTube video there talking about different metals react with acid. As we know that different metals have different reactivities, you will find that some of them they will be very reactive, some of them they may not. So uh last time okay we talked about the metal one. Okay, if you can recall that will be the metal react with acid to give salts and hydrogen okay so uh today we're going to talk about the other two part okay that will be reaction with the base which include metal oxide or metal hydroxide the other one we'll talk about the carbonate or hydrogen carbonate before that okay we'll just do the class practice 14.1 so right here okay you see that okay we got are uh, aluminium and calcium which both of them are metal and then you got sulfur acid and hydrochloric acid they got acid right there so what we're doing okay we try to write the chemical equation and also the ion equation for that so uh, let's do the chemical equation first so we got aluminium and also sulfuric acid so the salts that we have each of them will contribute part of that so that will be al which is three plus and then we got sulfate, which is two minus. So this one will become three, and this one will become two. Finally, you got hydrogen. So to balance this one, basically you see the ratio these two. We have two Al and then three SO4. So you need two Al and three SO4. That will be all right. So leaving behind, okay, you have to count how many hydrogen it form. Okay, there should be three of them. Okay, while B. Uh, B will be the reaction between the calcium and also hydrochloric acid. So the product form will be calcium chloride, which is CaCl2, because Ca is 2 plus, Cl is 1 minus. Again, you check the ratio between these two, 1 to 2. So therefore, 1 to 2, okay, and then the product will have hydrogen. So next, okay, you have to write the ion equation. If you really can't remember how to write the ion equation, check this QR code, okay, they will teach you how to write the ion equation. But generally, okay, you need to do is, for the AQ state, you change it to ions, separate them into ions. While if it is solid, liquid, or gas, they just remains unchanged, okay? Don't need to separate them into ions. Then what you need to do, Next is to cross out the spectator ions and then rewrite the whole equation. Just give you one example. For example, all the metal, it must be solid state, right? And the acid must be aqueous. Okay, and then the salts form because it's ion compound. So they will form in a solution. They will form into aqueous state. And a gas form will be gas. Okay, uh, just to the second one, maybe. Okay, so we will split it up split these up okay and then you have like ca plus because it's solid you don't change it you have iron okay you have 2h and 2cl okay and then it will become aq you separate into iron and then finally you got h2 so right here you find that the cl minus can be crossed away these are the spectator iron so when we rewrite the whole equation it will be something like this. So I actually give you some tips, okay, when, when writing the on equation. Normally, normally I will have to say, the acid, okay, they contain two parts. One is H plus, one is NO3 minus, one is H plus, one is Cl minus, okay. The anion part normally will be crossed away, leaving, about, leaving behind H plus. So as the salts, when you have the salts, like Na plus Cl minus, like maybe Ca2 plus NO3 minus. So normally, this part will be crossed away, okay? So in this case, you can find that, okay, we cross out the Cl minus, leaving about two plus Ca2 plus and 2H plus. So same as here, okay? So the sulfate can be crossed out, become H plus. Sulfate can be crossed out, become Al3 plus, and then leaving hydrogen aluminum behind. So uh, I suggest you pause the videos, do it one more time by yourselves, okay, and check the answers right here. Okay, we have example 14.1, okay, so this one will be the reaction between the Al, 
sink and also dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, so the product it will have will be sink, sink chloride. Okay, you have sink chloride and also you have hydrogen. Okay, so the equation should be like this. So uh, if you do that, okay, actually you finish part B already. So what would be the observation that you can see? So obviously you got hydrogen, so you have colorless gas bubble produced. You got solid, so therefore the solid dissolves. And you need to write one more observation. Remember this reaction is an exothermic reaction. So you will find the test tube becomes warm. Okay, heat is given out in the process. So uh, if you stick to what I've said just now, when you write an equation for the exit, Cl minus and the salt, the Cl minus the anion part will be crossed out. So therefore the ion equation, you can very quickly to write out like this. Okay, so put back the state and that's it for the ion equation. Got it? Um, next, so we'll start uh, the key point for this video. Okay, the second reaction that we're talking about will be the reaction with the base. Okay, base, as I mentioned, that is a chemical opposite to exit. Okay, so the base, how can we recognize is it a base or not? Okay, if it is a metal hydroxide or metal oxide, actually, all of those will be base. Okay, general equation for that, okay, it will be exit react with metal oxide. To form salt and water or while the other one okay they will react with metal hydroxide they also form salt and water okay so i'll just give you one example for example if i have naoh sodium hydroxide solution and then we have with uh let's say hno3 nitric acid so in the process the salts that you form okay will contain the metal part here and also the anion part here. So this one, okay, you have will be NaNO3, sodium nitrate. And then the water will be this one, uh, the OH from the alkaline and the H from the acid. So therefore you got H2O here, okay? So the state for the water will be liquid, okay, while the salt will be aqueous because it's an ion compound can form in solution. So right here, okay, if you try to write uh, the ionic question, you will find that, okay, this one can separate into plus and negative. Okay, maybe I write clearly once first, okay, for this one. Oh, so you separate these into iron, and then you will find that the spectator iron that we have here will be NO3 minus, okay, and also the Na plus can be eliminated. So therefore, leaving behind the ion equation will be H plus plus OH minus become H2O. Okay, so that one, okay, with the reactions, okay, with the hydroxide. Okay, we have another form of hydroxide I want to show you. Okay, so let's have a look here. The hydroxide we have is calcium hydroxide solid. This time it's slightly different. Okay, this is a solid. Okay, let's say we have react with the HCl this time, okay? So the salts that we form will be calcium chloride. Remember, calcium is 2 plus, so it will be CaCl2. And also the water right there, okay? So in the process, okay, we have 2 OH here, okay? And then you need 2 H for that, okay? Same as Ca and Cl2, the ratio between these, okay? But this time when we try to write our equation, pay attention, the... Calcium hydroxide that we have, okay, it is solid state. So therefore, this time, okay, we cannot break this up. Okay, we cannot break this up. So when we write, okay, it have to be as a solid state. All right, so leaving behind, okay, the anion will be eliminate. And then the salt anion part, okay, will be eliminate as well. This one, okay, is calcium ion. This one is solid. So therefore, you cannot eliminate them. Okay, so leaving behind, okay, will be like this. Okay, so this will be our equation. Remember, the solid state should not be separate in this case. Okay, so it will be different from the one above. Okay, so the observation that we can see because it's a solid state, so the calcium hydroxide will be dissolved in the process. But for the one above, you find that we don't have any solid. So it won't say like sodium hydroxide dissolves. And we can't see any gas form in the process. So there is no bubbles form. So for the above reaction, 
the only observation that we can think of, it will be the test tube becomes warm. Okay, so ah, uh, it will be like that. Next, okay, will be the copper two oxide. Okay, copper two oxide. You can see in this example, okay, the copper two oxide are black solid. Remember, copper two is not necessary blue in color as long as it is copper two oxide. That will be black solid. If it is in solution form, it will then be blue color. Okay, blue solution. So remember. Uh, in different situations, copper to iron, okay, or copper to oxide, they will show different color. So if you want to check this reaction, you can check this QR code. Okay, you have a look of the reaction. Um, so the reaction will be copper to oxide, and then this one is sulfuric acid. As this one is solid this time, okay, and then we put acid in it, the product will be CuSO4. 2 plus and 2 minus, so therefore the formula CuSO4, okay, and then we got water right there. So again, you can find that, okay, uh, the ratio is 1 to 1, so 1 to 1, okay, ratio is like this. H2 and O combined become H2O, so pretty simple. Okay, when you break it down into an equation, solid, not separate them, anion part, eliminate, and then you got and I part eliminate already, so you got iron left behind, and then you got water. Okay, so uh, the observation for this one, okay, you can see copper to oxide because it is solid, it dissolves. Okay, and then the solution, remember, they turn from colorless to blue. The exit itself is colorless, okay, but after the Cu2 plus iron release, then the solution become blue. So the reaction actually between the acid and base, we have a name. We call that one neutralization. And it is also a focus of the acid alkaline uh, topics. So you have to pay attention to that. Neutralization, during this reaction, only salt and water will produce. That means only two products. Okay, only two products. In the future, you will find that, okay, some of the reaction, they will give salt and water and carbon dioxide. There are three products, and that will not be count as neutralization neutralization only two product and you have to know that that will be a exothermic reaction what means by exothermic reaction exothermic reaction means that it give out heat okay it give out heat okay so uh, during neutralization heat will be given out and then they will produce salt and water Next, okay, we have some practice about the chemical equation and also an equation. So, uh, metal hydroxide, this one, okay, if you, pra uh, if you practice a little bit more, you know that the state of it, okay, but in the exam, okay, I think I will just give you very clearly, this one is solid and this one is solid as well, okay. Most of the time, actually, they are solid, okay, they're insoluble in water, okay, with some, uh, with some ex uh, exceptions only, okay, later on you'll learn a little bit more about that, okay. So for A, magnesium hydroxide, I just try to write faster. So this one is solid. When you add the dilute sulfur acid, remember the sulfate part will be eliminated. So therefore I can directly write like this. So the Mg will be 2 plus, and then you have 2OH, 2H plus, and you got water okay uh, part b okay that will be zinc oxide because this is also solid and then the nitric acid the nitrate part will be eliminated okay and then you react okay they form zinc two plus because this is two plus on the right hand side will be two plus left hand side this one will also be balanced by two otherwise the charge will not be different also you will find that this is two h and then one o then they will combine to become water. So this will be the ion equation. Okay, so the full equation, you write that by yourself. Okay, don't spend too much time. Next, okay, it will be part three, reaction with the carbonate and hydrogen carbonate. You can turn to page seven. Actually, carbonate and hydrogen carbonate, they are very similar. So just carbonate add with H+, plus, then they will become hydrogen carbonate, okay? The reaction, both of them, they will give salt, water, and carbon dioxide. You see that this time we got three products, okay? Not only 
water and salt. So therefore, this reaction, remember, very important the concept. This one is not neutralization. Okay, this reaction is not neutralization. The reaction between acid and carbonate, they are not neutralization. Okay, so uh, example, so calcium carbonate, this is solid. You get, uh, let's say, HCl maybe. Okay, so the product would be calcium chloride. It is CaCl2, so therefore this one will be 2. And then you got CO2 and also H2O. Okay, so you check here. Uh, this one, CaCO3, okay, you take out CO2 from it. So that means you got 1O right there. 1O right there. So combined with these two H, then we become H2O. Okay, I write it out easier for you to see. So if you take out a CO2, you still have an O, right? This O will then combine with the two H, and then they will form H2O here. Okay, so the second one, okay, will be sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay, and then react with, let's say, maybe nitric acid. Oh, get it a little bit more difficult. Uh, sulfuric acid, let's say, okay. So the product, the salts that form will be sodium sulfate. Sodium is 1 plus, sulfate is 2 minus, so therefore will be Na2SO4. As a ratio is 2 to 1, this one have to be 2. Got it? Okay, and then you got CO2 and water as well, because this is a kind of carbonate. So now when you balance this one, okay, you can think like this way. Oh, you can think like this way, okay? So HCO3 minus, you consider this one like this. Because we have two, so therefore you have two HCO3 minus. So each of the HCO3 minus, they will generate one CO2. Now we got two. So therefore in the product, you have two CO2 there, okay? And this part, okay, we got two. We got two HCO3 minus, so you have two OH minus. Each of the OH minus need one H plus to form water. Now we got two H plus. Is that right? Right here, you got H plus and H plus. So right here you got one water. Right here you got two water. So the balancing it will be like that way. Okay. So whenever you try to balance, okay, you can consider doing like this. Okay, the HCO3 minus, consider like this way. Okay, while CO3 minus, you consider like this way. Okay, so this will help you to do the balancing easier. Oh, general equation, okay, just how we mentioned, okay, for the carbonate, consider them as CO2 plus O2 minus, while hydrogen carbonate, consider them as CO2 plus OH minus. Okay, so easy for you to balance. The general question will be like that. Normally, okay, you got CO2, so therefore you will see colorless gas bubble evolve. And in this part, okay, we also learn a new term. Other than saying colorless gas bubble evolve, you can also call that effervescence occur. Effervescence, okay? Effervescence occur. Okay, so you pronounce this one by yourself a few times. Okay, effervescence occurs. Okay, that refer to colorless gas bubble evolve because of the CO two generate. So you will see effervescence. Okay, so effervescence just like this uh, pictures. You see the bubbles, all these bubbles coming out from the solid. Okay, uh, and at the same time, normally the carbonate provide you will be in solid state. So if it is solid. Then we also say that solid will dissolve in the process. And in the reactions, actually, it is also exothermic reaction. So um, the texture will become warm, will also be part of the observation. But normally, okay, we will just uh, prefer to say the colors bubbles evolve and things like that. And for this part, actually, we have a fun, interesting experiments that we can do, okay, for the kit only, only. So actually you can uh, take a look of the QR code right there, that is a chemical rocket, okay, using carbonate and acid. What we are doing, okay, you just in a bottle, in a bottle, we put some carbonate in it, say, for example, sodium carbonate. You see that they are using baking soda. Baking soda actually is uh, baking soda. Uh, actually it is uh, 
sodium hydrogen carbonate. And then what you need to add is add vinegar, and that vinegar is ethanoic acid. So you can see that acid add with carbonate, then they will generate a lot of CO2. And it will, this will build up pressure, and then you can force the rocket going up, okay? So I'll check the videos, okay, that is quite interesting. And examples right here, okay, our reaction with the dilute sulfur acid and calcium carbonate. And then our, and a small lump, small lump, lump means it is a solid, okay, small lump means small pieces, okay, it's not granule, okay. Small lump of calcium carbonate to the test tube dilute sulfur acid. Right, chemical version for the reaction of curd, that one should be easy. Carbonate, solid state, acid, you give salt, which is calcium and sulfate. And carbon dioxide and water. The students find that the calcium carbonate react very slowly and then the reaction soon stops. I have to say this part is very, very, very important. Okay. These reactions okay always seen in the public exam. Okay. The calcium carbonate react very slowly and then the reaction soon stops. The part of the calcium carbonate remain. Okay. Why we put in it and the reaction will soon stop. You have to have a look at this one. Because of the salts form, calcium sulfate form is insoluble in water. So you have to think about like this. When you got the calcium carbonate solid, you dump into the acid. When they dissolve and form the calcium sulfate, the newly formed calcium sulfate will form right on the surface of the calcium carbonate. Okay, so you just have a layer of insoluble solid wrapped around the calcium carbonate. So the calcium carbonate inside cannot react with the acid outside. Okay, because you've got a layer covering it up. Okay, so therefore the reaction will then soon stop. Okay, they will be stopping very, very soon. Okay, so uh, the reason for this one, okay, I want you to remember because the sulfur acid react with the calcium carbonate, insoluble calcium sulfate form coat on the surface of calcium carbonate. This one is very important. Okay. This prevents the carbonate from further reaction. So therefore the reaction will then stop. Okay, so this part, very important, part B, please mark it down. Part C, if dilute sulfur acid was replaced by nitric acid, would, what would be observed? This will be a difference because the calcium nitrate <coughs> form, that will be soluble. So in this case, you'll find that the calcium carbonate can then keep on react to give calcium nitrate without having this wrap around the calcium carbonate. So the reaction will keep on occur and then if it, uh, effervescence okay will then occur okay you may ask when i know that that is soluble one when i know that that will be insoluble uh, i have to say that okay you will learn a little bit more in chapter 18 okay so i'll uh, leave it there okay and then we talk about that later in this part you just learn part b memorize it will do okay last part okay that will be our class practice okay for this we are okay, uh, Actually, you can pause the videos and then go through it on your own. I just want to mention part C and also part, uh, part, C, um, part C and part D, okay? Because the iron that we have this time, okay, when they react, okay, they will give out iron to chloride and also they will give you copper to sulfate. Both of them, okay, they contain a pale green color iron and also blue color iron. So in the process, the observation, remember you can write one extra, that is pale blue solution is formed, okay, or you say the solution change from colorless to pale blue, and the other one will pale green solution is formed, okay? So um, I'll just say pale green solution is formed is not good enough because I prefer to say from what color to what color, okay? So uh, just these two, okay, I just want to remind you, uh, the solutions will change color, okay? So, uh, like this. So, uh, in summary, okay, we have learned three reactions of the acid. Uh, the acid can react with metal to form salt and hydrogen.
salt and hydrogen and then while well, the other one okay the uh, react with base which is including metal oxide metal hydroxide they give salt and water both of them they give salt and water and this reaction we have a name for that okay we call that one neutralization and the process our uh, heat will be evolved and last one okay that will be reaction with carbonate and hydrogen carbonate because we got carbonate in it okay so therefore they will give out co2 and this reaction is not a neutralization common observation that we can see okay you may see effervescence the new terms that we have learned colorless gas bubbles evolve if you have solid normally they will dissolve if you have color or colored iron to form you see colorless the solution change from colorless to pale green to blue or things like that okay if you really can't think of any you can try test to becomes warm okay so bear in mind anxiety will react with three different type of things other than that at this moment consider or uh, consider that there's no reaction will do okay that's all for this video bye bye